morning comes to us from the lectionary, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 through 18. Let's listen to the word of the Lord. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was the ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonisus, and Lysonius was ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the regions around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and every hill shall be made low, and crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and the whole flesh shall see the salvation of God. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Don't begin to say to yourself, Why, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you that, that God is able from these very stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees, and Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and is thrown into the fire. The crowds asked him, well, what then should we do? And in reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors, I mean, even tax collectors came to be baptized by him, and they asked him, teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. And soldiers also asked him, and we, what, what should we do? And he said to them, don't extort money from anyone by threats or by false accusations, and, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were, were filled with expectations, and all questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. And I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals either. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. And his winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And so, with many other such exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The word of the Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. Honestly, every year, every Advent, the lectionary has us read these words from that strange man who dressed funny and lived out in the desert. Just once, just once, I want to be able to say to the people, hurt the herald uh, angels, deck the halls with boughs of holly, follow the la 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 la. But instead, every year, the message that we get is this. Repent! Messiah is coming. Repent! <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> now see, Lord, that's exactly what I'm talking about there. Nobody wants to hear that during the Christmas season. I mean, isn't there a a better way to go about this? I mean, isn't there a more joyous message you could be giving us? Isn't there another way to Bethlehem? No.
mean, we, we've all got to go to the mall here, right? I mean, we're, we're not ready for Christmas yet. We've got lots of presents to get, things to, to do. You know how it goes, Lord. On the way to the mall, drop by the wilderness for a visit. There's a man there you need to meet. He can help prepare you for Christmas. Oh, you mean that, that jolly old bearded man wearing a red suit, right? Not exactly. You'll probably smell something like a camel first, then you'll know he's near. Although you probably hear him long before you see him. He's a fiery preacher named John the Baptist. Aw, but Lord, we don't really have time for a long, boring sermon, I mean, do we? I mean, we've just got too much to do here, God. I mean, besides, I'm a preacher myself, and if we wanted to hear a long, boring sermon, I could just preach one of mine. Well, you got a point there. Hey, hey. Hey, Lord, you're supposed to be laughing at this point. Uh, sorry. But don't worry. You won't play this guy more. In fact, he'll probably make you angry. Maybe he'll make you think. He just for me. He'll help you. All of you. Experience Christmas this year in a way you haven't for all that. All right, Lord. I give up. Fine. I'll go to Bethlehem through the wilderness this year. Have it your way. But they've all got to go with me. And if we don't get our shopping done, Lord, we're going to know who to blame. Isaiah. 
who describes John's purpose and mission. John is Elijah, who prepared the way for the Messiah. This is so exciting. Okay, well, but what does he mean by like make straight the paths and fill up the valley stuff? You see, we have a custom. Whenever a great king is coming to our village, all the people who are on the road, leading into the village, begin removing the rocks, filling top of them, leveling the ground, giving the king a clear path into the path. So John is saying that, that everyone's supposed to like join a road crew and clean up the highways? Is that it? <laughs> Not exactly. You're not from out there, right? No. You haven't been to the wilderness for a while, I don't know. Well, no, not exactly. I mean, I've been kind of busy, you know, getting ready for Christmas and everything. Christmas? Oh, oh forget it. Don't worry about it. So you're talking about cleaning up the road. Right. John's not really talking about road. He's not telling us to mend the past to our villages, but to mend our hearts. <coughs> Evil, cunning, poisonous, fleeing from the 
fire and judgment God is sending. They're not fooling God, only themselves, because God sees their hearts and their actions. Hmm. Okay. Well, what's up with him telling them to stop calling themselves children of Abraham? I mean, that really seemed to tick them off. You see, they don't consider themselves sinners. So why should they repent? They take great pride and see themselves as the children of Abraham. Father Abraham, you may remember, received great blessings and promises from God. Promises that they feel entitled to also. You might say that Abraham has built up such a treasure of merit with God that his descendants could draw upon it for themselves. They believe that simply because they are children of Abraham, and not for any merits of their own, that they will stay in God's judgment. Huh. So, so what's John really saying to me? I mean them. He's saying, truly want to repent. Stop boasting. Abraham is our father. Stop boasting. My family has been a member of this church. Just look at how much I give to the church. <coughs> you see, you're not indispensable. <coughs> No one God can take stones from this riverbed and make them better children of Abraham than you are. God is interested in your family roots. God's interested in your roots. So stop trying to hide your sins. Be honest with yourself and with God for a change. Face the truth. Repent and live a life that shows you really mean. This is the only way to be ready for God's time. But, but I'm not sure, you know, how exactly I ought to go about doing that. Look, John may be about to tell you. See them? Over there? Yeah. Those are tax collectors. Nobody likes them. No, we don't like them either. Keep us 
from experiencing the joy and the blessings that inside of us. And we can help by praying for them, listening to Karen. And remember, with God and good friends, even mountains can be moved. Hmm. You know, you sure have given me a whole lot to think about. I believe that if somebody asks me if I'm ready for Christmas this year, that I could actually say that I think I am, or at least I'm well on my way to being ready. And, and I haven't even been to the Marmalade Mall. <laughs> Just the wilderness. There may be no for you yet. Perhaps you can come to the wilderness more often. Yes, now I do know. You must all, all of you, get ready. There is one coming after me who is so much greater than I. I'm not worthy to even untie his sandals. He will fill you with the very presence of God. But you must get ready. You must repent. Turn your sin and turn back to God. Repent. Messiah is coming. Repent. Oh, Merry Christmas. <laughs>